so what's good everybody it's been a while it's been uh, a month about um wanted to get an episode out you know for for advanced playoffs we waited till the first round started but better late than never um been pretty busy with some things i know xer has been pretty busy with some new projects um and i know everyone besides our fellow canadians are surviving the election these past three days so you know i think it's right that we get an episode out and you know, try and take people's focus away from that and, and back on the more important things in Counter-Strike. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so um, I guess my last piece before... Um, <laughs> my last piece before ending over to Exner, um, I tried to do one of these brackets that we had last season where we had, like, the prediction pick em thing like we do for March Madness. Mm -hmm. I could not find a bracket that will match up with ESCA's big brain freaking lower bracket i tried to like recreate last season's advanced uh playoff last policy. season's was wrong right yeah it was wrong i remember like, I tried, that i literally like filled out the bracket and like put all the teams in to see if it would line up correctly with like, a new uh yeah. platform and it was fucked up also mm -hmm. so one day we'll find a bracket that you can customize lower bracket matchups um but yeah until then i don't know exter what's going on man how are you doing i'm good i'm good um Done casting for a little while. Got a playoffs match tonight. We're playing in open, so uh, that'll be right after this. So if you're uh, got nothing to do, come watch me play open. Twitch.tv slash Exner. But uh, I mean, we can go ahead and I, I know you got a couple of questions before we get into uh, uh, before we get into talking about the uh, the playoffs. But also before we get into anything, I'm gonna ask if you're watching this on YouTube to make sure you smash the like button and subscribe button. Uh, at the start of the video so you all don't forget um before you click away please and thanks i see a lot of people going over to youtube for streaming i'm wondering like if that is that like the is that the move not like i'm making any fucking money off of twitch but <laughs> <laughs> i guess i wouldn't make any off of youtube either i don't know uh, anyway yeah, i don't know <laughs> let's get into the real reason why we're all here to talk to our fellow friends from counter nature cs spermy and xander uh what's going on guys What's up? What's up, man? Well, it's good. Um, so yeah, I know I said I wasn't gonna say anything, but how are you guys doing during these past couple of days? Are you guys stressed out and and binge eating this election, or are you guys just chilling, grinding some Counter Strike? Um, you can go ahead, Xander. Well, I was just like I said, I'm Canadian, so he's I chilling. Care. I just do homework in Counter Strike. That's Hell nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just been. Pretty much just lifting and coming and playing CS and just uh, preparing for playoffs. Trying to just not really pay too much attention to all that. Amen. So. Mm. Amen. <clears throat> um, cool. So, I mean, like, do one of you guys want to go first and kind of give some background, kind of like who you are um, in any way, shape, or form, whether that's, you know, who you are as a person, who you are in Counter-Strike, how you kind of, like, even came into the Counter-Nature team. Anything and, and everything on those topics. Do you want to go? Um, nah, you can go ahead first. Uh, Let's hear Xander. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I don't know. I don't know how to really introduce myself, but like, uh, let's just say I played CS for like a bit now. Um, as soon as I got into advance, I teamed up with Icy. Icy's still on the team. He like left, came back, left it. I think again maybe he just left once but i'm not sure but me and him have had this team for a bit now and we've always wanted to like uh make him deal obviously that's the goal and then get further than that and then pretty much uh we picked up spermy on the way because you know we need an igl and we always had a struggle with finding igls and like whatnot and then we picked up i think was it Eki after Spermy? I'm not even... No, it was, uh, it was like, literally, like, simultaneous. Yeah, I basically. think we picked... Yeah, we picked up Beaky because he... Um, something happened with his team, I'm not even sure, but he joined us. We thought he was insane, so we picked him up, and then... He is insane. With that, we also had another roster issue with an opper, and then we picked up Delta, Spermy's friend. And so, pretty much, this roster that we have now is, like, a ton of experience, and, like, I think that's always what me and Icy lacked. We need like people with experience and like we need, I don't know, people to lead us pretty much. Not lead us, but like 
I'm not even really sure how to explain it, like to help us like improve pretty much. And then with this team, I feel like we always improve with our, with our practices and like whatnot. And that's why we're like performing right now, at least. Amen. That's yeah. <laughs> so as you guys know, my name is, well, I go by Spermy. Um, and I've been playing CS probably since I was like 15, I'd say 15, 16. So quite some time. Um, with CSGO, um, I've just had a lot of experience with a lot of different players. Um, uh, I've played in the MDL, I've played in a lot of different tournaments and collegiate, etc. Um, been IGLing for probably four or five years. Majority of my style comes from uh, one of my good friends, which is Stanislaw. So he kind of helps me um, with IGLing, what's the proper way, um, how to properly IGL and have your team kind of essentially listen to you and trust in your calls. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I guess I developed into becoming an IGL. And, uh, Prior to this season, I was considering just, you know, not even playing anymore. I was just so done with it after last season. And um, <clears throat> I met these guys. Um, they asked me if I if I was willing to try out. And I said, you know, I'm down. And uh, after, I think it was the first two days, I was like, yeah, these guys, these guys have the skill to go really far. I think if I bring in um, my IG yelling and you know, they believe in what I'm calling. I think the team can be really, really, really good. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Sounds like a, a match made in heaven from from <laughs> and into, into your follow up, and also having a kind of Stanislaw to um to kind of refer to. That was a a nice. I don't want to say a humble brag, but that's like a. I, I did not expect you to say that you were kind of pulling pulling notes from him as a friend. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. He helps me. He helps me out a lot with um with like just even like creating stuff because um right now as xander knows we have three strats i would say uh that i've pretty much invented that have not been seen yet by anybody on any level of counter-strike wow so um you guys will probably see those uh if we're able to play mirage during uh the rest of playoffs and uh it'll be it'll be really interesting to say the least Hopefully, yeah, gaming doesn't have a translator listening in on this show. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I was like, well, I'm certain that some people are going to be listening in. Um, did you use any of those like ideas in your match against Morning Light? Um, we did, but we didn't get to actually fully do it just yeah. because um, they happened to play the round differently than what I expected. Okay. So we didn't re we didn't really get a chance to fully run it properly. Um, we tried to, but you know you won't really get much information if anybody here is watching, trying to see like, oh, okay, I'll watch the demo and see what they're gonna do. You won't get any information on it. <laughs> Just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Will they know what it is when it when it happens, or is it gonna be yes. like? <laughs> yes, when it happens, when it happens, I promise you, you guys are watching. You will know. You'll be like, "What the hell is this?" I promise. I gotta see what I'm doing on the ninth. <laughs> I, might be, I might be catching this game, dude. This sounds so fun. I games. I didn't, I wanted to start off with kind of going into like the playoffs and stuff with like uh, other teams, but like this conversation is just too good to kind of like let it go. So yeah, I mean, like I think it's. I don't want to call it early, but I think it's safe to assume. You know there's a good chance that you guys are going to be playing yeah, gaming next. I mean, how does that feel for you guys? Are you, like, super excited? Do you guys want a, an easier matchup, or, like, you happy to kind of, like, get this kind of challenge right in the second round? Yeah, um, I mean, anybody would say, like, yeah, let's have an easier matchup. Let's make it, you know, all the way through the ch to the championship round because you're playing easier teams. Um, but I personally think that we perform better against better teams and I think that when we play teams that are of lesser skill, we kind of like, it's like we just take it easy. We take our foot off the pedal sometimes. 
So that's why I think playing Yagami will be actually a lot better for us. Um, none of us here are sitting here thinking like, oh my god, it's Yagami, etc. Um, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, everybody's aiming, everybody's shooting. You just gotta outplay the other team and be smarter, you know? So I think we'll have the ability to do that. And um, we've surprised already a bunch of people with the uh, past tournament we played. and. That's not over. I'm just gonna say that now. Nice. And I guess yeah, like kind of like on that subject. Um, what was it? Was it the was it an FPL Cup or was that an ESC Cash Cup with with the Triumph upset? I guess you you guys are referring to. I think it was um, a face it one. It was it, the FPL it, Cup. Yeah. yeah. So how was that one? I mean, like, were you guys kind of like just playing playing nuts, or were you guys just uh, like, do you wish you played better than that, or kind of like how was that match for you guys? Can I be honest about it? I feel like I feel like they weren't trying as hard as they could have been. Let's just say that. But like at the same time, we were. I think we made a lot of misplays, but we definitely played better than I don't know what we used to. And so that's like how we got the dub, kind of. They like I think that's like fourteen. I don't even know what the score was. Thirteen seven, and they made some really like either dumb decisions or they're literally trolling. And then as soon as we started like coming back a little bit, I think they started trying. And then it was like fourteen ten when they started trying again. I bet. And then didn't like honestly, they kind of just choked. I don't know. But like we played very well. Not to say that they trolled, and that's the reason we won. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I th- I think that's pretty fair to say. I mean, you know, these cash cups and and kind of on that subject, I'm curious. Like, what have you guys been thinking about these cash cups? Like. Have you guys been liking the opportunities to the like? I'm I'm assuming there's not many opportunities to play triumph and whatnot. So, um, have you been finding it to be like good practice or you know just whatever? Or what is your guys kind of like outlook on that? Um, I'd say it's we we use it for practice, honestly. Um, I mean if you win, obviously, all right, cool. Um, but we usually use it just to practice. Um, and kind of see where we stand in terms of um skill level with you know certain teams and um you know to fix any little kinks that we have uh etc um in my opinion i think the cups are actually better for practice as opposed to actual practice because from our past experiences with certain teams um you know you'll play until someone gets to 16 and if we get to 16 if there's 10 rounds extra, if there's seven rounds extra, et cetera, they're just going to run around and just do really stupid things because yeah. they're like, oh, game's over. We're just going to troll and blah, blah, blah. And so that's why I think the cups are actually way better for us in terms of practice because teams are actually trying, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we've been doing with the cups. We've been trying to play as many as possible tournaments um, and just kind of seeing where we are and what we need to fix. And what we need to just keep how it is. Long term, do you think those cups are gonna like help bring some like better competition to the NA scene? Because I've heard a lot in like some previous interviews with some other like some other players that like the key difference between Europe and NA is like the amount of tier two tournaments and like the amount of competition that Europe has. And so I think that like Face It and NESE are doing their best to kind of bring that sort of like, like the loot bets and like the, all the different tournaments that go on in EU, um, kind of bring it into NA. But like I guess without the gambling sponsorships and all of that that it comes with the EU, set of things. Mm-hmm. So like long term, do you think that's gonna like, not save NA but bring some some better competition? I think go ahead, uh actually you can go ahead Xander. Uh, I was just gonna say like. I think it's really good for the scene. Um, I think, honestly, how it was before, uh, they were just, like, there was only, like, individuals coming up in the scene. There's, like, people, like, yeah. Stewie was a long time ago, but you could kind of see, you can kind of say Grim. Grim was really nuts and Triumph. Like, there's no real teams going up to that level. Um, maybe you could say, I think Chaos is really good, but I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. with these, like, tier two tournaments i think it's it helps like these teams get noticed and like i don't know they it's pretty much yeah just like copying european like europeans the european scene right now is like 
massive compared yeah. to the NA scene of CS. So doing whatever the European scene is doing is probably just going to benefit <laughs> the NA scene. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Kind of going back to, I guess, the higher level stuff, Um, you know, whether that be like Spermie's eye gelling, um, just bringing more structure with, with maybe even Ryan, RDB on the coaching side. Um, last four games of the regular season, you won by a scoreline of 64 to 27. Um, I think you guys obviously noticed it, that you guys really kind of started putting together solid wins and whatnot. I'm kind of curious on, on what you guys want to share as far as like what you started really working for you guys uh, going into this playoffs and, and kind of things that have really been working for you um, to kind of bring the success that you guys have been having so far or I guess lately. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll go. Um, I think that the team chemistry um, is a big thing on any team. Um, and if you look at, there's certain teams that you'll see, they have like a nuts lineup and then you're like, how are they losing, right? And it doesn't make any sense. And I think it all really has to do with the team chemistry. So one of the things that we do is we have certain players play with each other more often than not just because of that team chemistry and the fluidity that they have when playing with each other so that's something that we really try and incorporate and i try and incorporate with strats um i also think that when we dry run and we practice in scrims. We figure out what the issue is, what's not working, what is working, and we kind of iron that out. And uh, I think that when I'm calling, um, it just feels like when I call something, everyone's like, okay, this is what we're doing. I have faith in the call. I'm trusting that this is the right call, and I'm just going to do it. And when we're doing that, I think it's it starts working and then everybody's like, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it up. And then, I mean, then it's like a runner rate. It's a runaway train from that point on. Uh, and that's kind of what's been happening and what's developing within the team. Yeah. That, I can be kind of sick against like a team. Like, yeah, like I think that's something that you need as a team that, I mean, is an underdog compared to like, yeah, who's had a perfect season. That's mm -hmm. that's gonna be perfect. And yeah, I think that's the perfect storm. <laughs> perfect is the word of the evening. Um, but you know, yeah is obviously a great team. Um, yeah is also extremely international now, right? I mean, they're playing with Swisher and Kaber in advance. Or am I wrong right now? I don't, I don't think Kaber. I... I think I think they picked up Booby. Is he in okay. the 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 team though? Yes. He made it before Same. the deadline. Yeah, they got Booby picked up before the deadline. Oh, that's good. Okay. So, I mean, you know, they obviously have a great team. But, yeah, I mean, if you can kind of put up a team that's playing well and also has, like, good chemistry and, and has, like, you know, good connection, then that really is uh, something that can end up being uh, kind of like a disaster for, like, a starlet team. Like, yeah, but I don't want to give up too much hype. I don't want to get your guys' heads <laughs> big. So I'm just going to shut up about that. <laughs> Um, Exner, do you guys you have any more questions? You kind of like while we're on like the the actual counter nature side of things before we kind of go into the bigger playoff picture with other teams. Um, I've got a question for Spermy. Um, more about at ice, but uh, what what were your like um? So you were the ideal of that team, right? Last yes. season. Yes. What was uh, what was like the vibe of that team towards the end there? Because I thought that you guys had a lot of potential, but I think it kind of fell apart towards the end. Um. Well, I'm a very straight up person, so I'll be very straight up with you. Um, it was very um negative towards mm -hmm. the end. Um, as soon as Twiggy had to leave, we had to basically get an emergency fifth. Um, once we got the emergency fifth, um, is that, who, who was the fifth? Was that was, Slugy? that was sensor. Okay. Um, we got the emergency fifth. Uh, I mean, he didn't gel with us like Twiggy did, but it's not anything against mm -hmm. him. Um, he just didn't have the chemistry that we had with Twiggy. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, it just really seemed like the morale of the team, the positivity of the team was like, 
oh, we lost Twiggy. Okay, we can't win anymore. Yeah. That's what it felt like. And, and it just felt like I was constantly telling him, like, listen, it doesn't matter if he's gone, we can win. Right. And that's kind of what happened towards the end. And then eventually uh, everyone kind of just got fed up and, you know, the, the roster ended up dying. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it is what it is. So that's kind of what happened. Yeah, that, that that's all I have to ask, though, before we get into, like, advanced, uh, the, the rest of the bracket. Yeah, all right. So, I mean, um, first round, I guess, is, like, what, halfway done? Maybe a little bit more than halfway done. I don't think anything really crazy happened besides maybe Thunder Logic beating Rise Esports Club. Um, you know, but the Thunder Logic team, not the same roster. It was in the finals last year, MDL the year before, or, excuse me, the seasons before. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Let's just jump right into it. If you guys had to pick, you know, an underdog team for this playoff run, uh, who do you think it would be? And I guess when I say underdog team, you know, <laughs> probably any team besides yeah, gaming <laughs> really, cause I feel like it could be a bit of a crapshoot, but curious what your guys' opinions are on that. You want to go Xander? I'll go after. Oh, uh, look at the bracket. I think honestly, able esports, maybe. They're seated number seven. They, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know. They're all, I think, like, they don't have a lot of experience, let's just say, and they're really new, I feel like, but they all, like, meshed well. They just made that roster. I think, like, four of them joined, and, like, KDZ kept the roster alive, and they just made that roster this season. And, like, they've been playing and performing really well. So, like, maybe them, honestly. I, I wonder how they're going to do against their... Uh, I think they're playing Ocean's team. So, yeah, I honestly expect a win from them against Ocean's team. But uh, other than that, I'm not, like... I'm not really sure who else would be an underdog. Um, in my opinion, uh, based on specifically seeding-wise... I I don't I don't have an underdog in my I don't think there's anybody that's an underdog looking at seeding. Um I think the seeding is 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 good. Um but aside from that I don't think there's any underdog that's really going to make um a stand per se. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I I just I I don't think so. I mean, if the if there is a team, I think we can and obviously that's extremely biased, but I I could literally yeah. care less what anybody else thinks because I know how good our team is. So um, everybody else, I don't see any potential in them at all. So I'll ask you, I'll ask the question maybe a little differently. So the other two teams that I've kind of like had my eye on uh, as kind of like top teams outside of like, yeah, gaming and whatnot, um, GSG9, GGPR Esports, who do you guys put uh, as the higher seed there? Between those two teams, uh, GSG nine. Same, same. I just those guys have been playing together for, Lord knows, right? So I think they just have like the natural chemistry there, and I just think they're overall better players. Um, and there's people like on GGPR that I've literally never heard of in my life. So yeah. yeah. That GGPR team is, it is an interesting story, though. I mean, they come from the main playoff championship, and they kind of just, like, really take advance pretty aggressively. Um, and they rebuilt most of that roster as well. So it's been a cool story. I, I agree with what you guys are saying as far as, you know, that GSG9 team being together and being more, like, reputable. But props to GGPR. GGPR. Um, and then as far as uh, the Able Esports thing that you said before, Xander, yeah, I mean, with the... Uh, what SKDC? Is that your who you're referring to with the Ocean's team? Um, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm not sure what they're called. I'm assuming, yeah. Um, I mean, they just they lost them 16-14 the other week, so I'm sure they're uh, excited to get another uh, potential three maps in against them. Mm-hmm. Um, Exxon, what about you? What are you thinking as far as uh, some topics for this playoffs bracket? Um. I could be like totally wrong when I say this, but I've seen I've seen Revenant esports at least in the cash cups like peak at a pretty high level. I think that um depending on if like I guess GGPR or Revenant esports can kind of 
take on each other and like if it's like a two O and like a dominant two O kinda like uh kinda like what Revenant did to team B Laws or even GGPR did to UYU, um then if, if that that could get like interesting that sort of momentum. But either way, like one of those two teams is gonna make it pretty deep into the bracket. Um so because one of those two teams is going to win. So I think either one of those two teams, and of course, you know, counter nature from what I hear is, is looking pretty hot. So I'm, uh, mm-hmm. I'm really holding my breath now. I don't want to, I don't want to hype things up too much, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think that might be all I have for a nice short and sweet kind of jump back on the camera, jump back on the mic, getting, uh, getting Spermie and Xander on the call, uh, showing some love. Uh, any of you guys got anything else you want to say? Uh, Spermie or Xander, any shout outs you guys want to give? Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Uh, I just think that we'll we will walk we will talk the talk and we will walk the walk as well Ooh, let's so go. I, yeah yeah i don't i i don't care what anybody thinks let's go. um i know how good we are and i'm we'll bring it so all right bring it Fuck on it. we want we want all the smoke <laughs> Fuck it <laughs> uh, yeah we want all the smoke bring all the smoke i could care less i want the smoke <laughs> Let's go. All right. You changed my mentality officially. I'm about it now. Yeah, gaming. What's good? Bring them. Um, <laughs> on that note, Xander, you have any follow-up to that? <laughs> uh, yeah, not really. I'm just ready to upset. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a good balance. <laughs> um, cool, man. Well, that's what I've got. Uh, Exner, how about you? What do you what do you got? How do you wanna how do you wanna send us off here? Um, shout out to uh well we're now six foot eight, previously named <laughs> uh previously named Exner next big caster, but uh we're gonna have ourselves uh, open season. Pretty sure we're gonna gatekeep pain gaming from uh advanced or MDL relegation, so again twitch.tv, I'm going live after this, so catch us. Catch me. Oh, I have to do. I'll do one more, one more shout out as well. So definitely check on Exner, dropping bombs and play open playoffs. And uh, <laughs> thanks to to Coach Ryan RDB for for letting us steal some practice time. Oh yeah, much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, that's all for me. Thanks guys. Peace out. Peace. Later. Later. <laughs>